Well, first of all, um, I want to thank uh, Alan for doing this and inviting me. This is a, a great summit. I hope it, it's here for many years to come. My name is Matt Doss. Um, Alan asked me to talk about a taxis. I guess that's a new term we're going to be using. Um, I was the taxi commissioner uh, for a very long time, the longest serving in New York City. Uh, I worked for several mayors. Um, it's probably the weirdest and the craziest and the wildest agency you could ever work for. I'm still recovering from it. I left about eight years ago. I was also general counsel before that, uh, which was even crazier. I'm president of the ITR, which is uh, taxi and limo and TNC commissioners all over the world. We, we do conferences every year. Alan and others in this room, many have come um, over the years and presented and talked about best practices. And for the last eight years, I've been with the, um, uh, the uh, University Transportation Research Center for Region 2, which is New York, New Jersey, Puerto Rico, uh, USDOT funded center at the City University of New York. I teach, I research not just in taxis, but now in everything, mobility, AVs, et cetera. Um, um, I, I was just named the Transportation Technology Chair, and I'm also a transportation lawyer. And I'm, I've become very involved in the last couple of years with these issues, uh, especially with TRB. I, I've been thrust into everything, probably because I'm one of the few lawyers among all these uh, engineers uh, that have regulatory experience. But I'm also a labor lawyer, and I'm also an automobile litigation lawyer and expert witness. So. A lot of the issues I've been dealing with all my life are now in the middle of this. So some of the projects I think that you'd be interested in, uh, well, first of all, um, on a committee with NASA and uh, working with Booz Allen on uh, automated flying taxis, which I think somebody alluded to, but we'll, we won't get into that. Uh, but believe me, it's real. But what I find interesting is that NASA is not even talking to the FAA. Oh, what happened here? What you said. It's what I, you said. It's what you said, or was it the thing going up? I, I mean, look, I think it's got a better shot at working the flying taxis anyway. Um, but I think next year, hopefully, we, we can come back here and talk about a very interesting project. Uh, I know there's some Europeans in the room. Um, I'm um, on the planning committee for uh, a summit between the United States and the European Union that's taking place in Brussels, where the TRB. Um, has selected a group of researchers to put together a document that will set forth the research agenda uh, for so the socioeconomic impacts of automated vehicles, uh, covering everything from labor to equity. So I'm sure the document, which I think Texas A&M is working on, um, so some drafts will be available by the next conference. But we're going to talk about, and I'm a little disappointed Uber Lyft, every time I show up at a conference, you, they, they flee. Um, I, I, think, I'm, I think Uber would probably be very happy <laughs> to learn that I took their spot on the panel. I think I'm gonna be talking to, I was supposed to talk tomorrow. Um, but um, for those who know me, I've been a, a big critic of the TNC business model. I'm kind of starting to move on. Um, I was probably have wanted dead or alive posters in their office until Waymo came along. Um, but I'm gonna talk, they would have loved this because I'm gonna bash taxis today. Um, so I'm disappointed they're not here. Um, First of all, Alan asked me to talk about what we've learned from the ride handling stuff. I'm going to talk a lot about policy, politics, governance, as opposed to some of the statistics um, and, and the nuances of technology that have been covered today uh, by my colleagues and by Bruce. Uh, the first of all, what, what happened to taxis? Um, now, we, I think we all know the story. TNCs came. They started with this new business model, putting a license cause in the road. Then they made them legal. and. They have special laws just for themselves, but I think there are three things that the industry has learned or not learned. Number one, you need more money. <laughs> you know, in, in, in this day and age, if you're gonna be doing lobbying and litigating, you need financing. And I think basically they just had it good for too long where, you know, they would, they would hire a lobbyist and they'd go to the fundraisers. When you're, when you're outgunned like this, there's just nothing that could help you. So I think that's part of the democratic process is that you know, we, you know, money does impact things. So I think that's their first uh, lesson. Uh, I don't know if they could have done anything about that. Number two, this is what's happening now. If you can't beat them, join them. Some companies, uh, Transdev, for instance, is in the audience. You know, they bought up, unfortunately, to, to their chagrin, several taxi companies in the U.S. Um, before all this happened, and now some, some of their companies, like in Colorado, are applying to become TNCs themselves. So there are some well-heeled taxi companies that are doing that. Number three, 
And this is where I think this could be a very terrible mistake. I go to and speak at all these conferences every year for the last eight years. And they are, their game plan at this point is not to get an app, not to do autonomous vehicles. Their game plan is to cut costs and services even more. Like let's take our, what they're doing, number one, is every, every country, the Philippines, is getting a call center. They're outsourcing their call centers when you call a taxi company. Number two, they're looking for regulators to what they call level the playing field, which means let's take, like in Seattle, the, the safety cameras that protect the cab drivers out because it costs us too much money. Let's um, keep the taxis on the road longer, which is probably a big part of the problem. The best thing we ever did in New York City was put new cabs on the road. It was the biggest game changer. It's the only city other than maybe London where we have new cabs on the road that have recycled after time. They're putting used cars on the road in every city. Now they want to put, keep the cars on the road longer. It's actually playing right into Uber and, and Lyft's hand. And um, there are some other things they're doing. They have uh, the TLPA, which is the trade group that represents taxis and limos nationally and internationally. Um, they do have a fleet forward program to provide taxi industry uh, um, owners with support on how to do things better. But, um, and now they're finally, after five years, looking to come up with an app. Um, I think the problem was it's a, it's a little too late, number one. Number two, the cab industry doesn't work well together. They're like the Hat Rocks and the McCoys. You know, the problem in how TNCs got off the ground is that in San Francisco and all over the country, you know, Curb or one of these cool apps were coming, Halo, and they'd go to a taxi fleet, and the taxi fleet owner would say, you know what, I'll use your app for my fleet, but you can't go to my competitor down the street. If they would have got one app through the TLPA, this would have been a very different game right now. This, I don't know if the TNCs would have gotten off the ground the same level that they did. Uh, there are some things going on with platforms. There are two reports I did for the city of Montreal and Mississauga in Canada. We looked at all the TNC regs and we looked at different options for what we call a universal app. There are regulators that are toying with the concept that if the industry can't do it, the government maybe should develop a platform to share APIs so all the apps can work together and we can get uh, use cabs as a utility with TNCs like they're doing in Montreal. Or we could develop a platform like the International Road Transport Union was looking to do before the project fell apart where you could use your eCab app in Paris and then you could use that same app when you land in Australia. It'll, it'll integrate with the back end of the dispatch systems that are being used in the, t in the Australian taxi companies. Um, it would kind of you know, create the, the equivalent of a universal app. It, it hasn't happened. I don't know if it is going to happen. The TLPA has picked Curb, which used to be Taxi Magic, as the, um, the app for the country. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if everybody's going to sign on to it or the, they have the marketing dollars to make it work. But I, I hate to leave you with this image in your mind. But beautiful, isn't she? I mean, you know, you, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. What do consumers like about Uber and Lyft? I, well, <laughs> well, they have a, a pink mustache, but I haven't seen lipstick yet. But I, it, it's a limo that's doing taxi type stuff and you get it right away. Now, some of them are crappy, you know, like the Uber X, frankly, I've never had a good experience with Uber X, but Uber Black is a limo. I mean, what's not to like about that? And people are willing to pay more. It's a marketing phenomenon. But look, the taxi industry's got to change its game. Flywheel, they painted their cars red. They have an app that matches. They bought a fleet. It could have worked. You know, newer cars, too little, too late. They need to change and do something dramatic. Maybe automated taxis. You know, maybe put, duh, new cars on the road. That's what they need to do. They're going in my opinion, in the wrong direction. I've tried to talk to them, but let's, you've heard, seen the movie Groundhog Day? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so, <laughs> um, Bruce used to work at TLC too. It, the same issues for the last couple of decades. You wake up at TLC and taxis, the same problems are there. Maybe we solve a few of them, uh, but it's the same stuff over and over again. You could go look in the paper in the 1940s, the 1970s, it's the same issues we deal with. I, what I like to do, I don't have the answers to this, I just wanted to drop some bombs here and talk about, like, peel the automated vehicle onion. What does this mean if we get automated taxis or TNCs? What happens to these issues that we've been dealing with? Do they go away? Do they get better? 
You know, we're talking about like equity, we're talking about underserved communities, accessibility, seniors could get around. When you really start digging down and asking these questions, and I don't know the answers to them, I'm just gonna raise them. These are the issues that we've been dealing with for years. Illegal refusals, you know, people wanting to go to certain neighborhoods. Like I live in Brooklyn, I can't get a cab to go to Brooklyn. And there's racial based refu refusals sometimes. You have unlicensed operation and illegal street hails. You have passengers being overcharged by drivers. You have uh, pedestrian, um, well, you have crashes. You have um, robberies happening inside the cabs. You have uh, customer service and courtesy issues. Vehicle aesthetics, taxi fares, their affordability, underserved communities, accessibility environment. Well, let's go through them one by one real quickly. And I thought this would be a great exercise to look at what would change at level three where there's a driver in the car, but the car is automated and ostensibly safer. And what would happen at level four and five when you take the driver out if you had automated taxis on the streets of New York or elsewhere? I, you know, refusals. I mean, everybody remembers the Danny Glover incident, you know, when he, he started a movie about a year after, but he made a big stink about not being able to get a cab. Uh, it's a real serious issue. It happens usually when times are, are, uh, are, are tough where um, when refusals don't happen as often, in my opinion. But level three is probably not gonna change that. At levels four and five, there's not gonna be a driver to refuse your service, so we have more equality. Um, illegal operations, you know, I think nothing's probably gonna change. If you have drivers behind the, the, uh, wheelchair, um, an automated taxi, um, you're still gonna get people that are looking to masquerade as taxis without licenses. But at levels four and five, it really depends on whether there's coverage. Look, if, if these vehicles are not available in all parts of the city, you're still gonna see, uh, as long as people are still allowed to drive cars at some point, you're gonna see uh, illegal operations. Um, and I question whether there will even be a hail for a taxi. You know, you're going to have to do uh, a hail with a device. So maybe with all the discussion about whether connected vehicle policies that were talked about at DOT are gonna continue in light of AVs, probably maybe vehicle to vehicle won't because it's being subsumed with the technology, but I can still see vehicle to infrastructure or vehicle to passenger or p vehicle to pedestrian. You know, that, that the, the phone will just be held, will be able to see where the pedestrians and passengers are so that crashes could be avoided, but also that you could actually hail the cab through that type of service. Overcharging passengers. You know, uh, cab drivers will go through extraordinary methods and means to overcharge customers. I, I, I don't know how many people we've arrested. Um, I, used to I used to catch them years ago, splicing the wires from the meter to the car, where they put these elaborate devices with reed switches in the door panels with magnets so that when the, the customer's in the back seat looking and sleeping that they're making the, the meter go forward. Well, look, that problem may not go away with items four and five. When you get to level four and five, there's no driver. You could probably, you know, overcharge customers, you know, sneaky medallion owners could do it remotely, potentially. Um, you know, look, there's probably more of a chance that you could have more overcharging of, passen of uh, passengers. Now, the safety issue, crashes, you know, maybe we'll have less crashes at level three. Right, you know, this, it's, it may be safer depending on whether you're mixing with other vehicles. But at levels four and five, I think we're it's, it's gonna, there is definitely gonna be um, some, some safety enhancements. We get close to division zero. Incidents, a big issue for TNCs, especially Uber, you know, is this insistence that they wanna use these, what I think are inferior background checks. Now, it's a big controversy now. There's always been crime and still is. Um, you know, by passengers against cab drivers and, and, and also by drivers against passengers. Um, I don't think anything's gonna change at level three, but at level four and five, there's no more drivers. However, I think we were discussing this the other day, Alan, what, you know, there's nobody supervising that car. All sorts of stuff can go down. You know, you could have prostitution taking place. You could have somebody forcing somebody at gunpoint to get into the back of the vehicle. I mean, maybe we can outfit them with cameras, but this, like, these are things we need to think about when you're dealing with stuff on the street, which is what we do when we're in the regulatory world. Um, customer service, you know, has anybody uh, ever had a, an experience with a nasty cab driver? All right, uh, nasty TNC driver? 
Oh, less. Okay. Um, maybe they'll get better at level three because they'll be just sitting there and like, you know, with, at the control panel and they'll engage in conversation. At level four and five though, will they become, uh, there'll, be no, there'll be no drivers, so, but you're gonna lose the whole experience of getting into a cab. You know, the ambassador to the city picking you up, asking them where's the best places to go. And maybe you'll have like a, you know, a Siri type entity or an Alexa that replaces them, like an automated cab driving voice. We tried that with talking taxis years ago and that did not go over well. There was a really bad Queens accent and, and the program was scrapped. Uh, vehicle uh, aesthetics and cleanliness, okay? Littering, graffiti, okay? Cab drivers are responsible for making sure and owners that the cab's clean. If not, they get summons. There's nobody watching the shop what's gonna happen in the back of the, of the cab. I'm sure they'll clean it up at the end of the shift, but who wants to sit on a sick, sticky seat? Uh, taxi fares, will they go up, down? Sh there should be some premium decrease, I would hope, at a level three environment, right? Um, and a big change at level four and five in terms of driver costs going down, insurance costs going down, the cost of labor going down for medallion owners if, they, if there are medallion owners at that point. So I think from a fair scenario, it could be good, but you know, nobody ever walks into the TLC and says, things are great, you know, <laughs> you know, you're doing a great job. They come in and say they're making no money. I'm sure there'll be other reasons and things that they can come up with uh, to ask for, to make sure that consumers get screwed. Um, underserved communities, okay? Now, everyone's talking about how this is gonna change um, things at, at level four and five, and I think it depends. Um, there has to be e-hailing exclusively. Now remember, everybody doesn't have a phone. There's gotta be a way to get these cars. If these cars are not going outside the central business district, TNCs or, uh, or taxis or whatever type of automated vehicle, it's not gonna solve the problem. There needs to be coverage, you know, for, for the people in these communities. And the price has to be right for that. Uh, accessibility, everybody kind of acknowledges that, you know, senior citizens who are unable to drive at a certain age, this could be great for them. But what about the, the, those who are, bound, are in wheelchairs? Those who are uh, people with disabilities where you have to put ramps into the taxi cabs. First of all, I'm not sure if manufacturers will be uh, at, at this level not making the cars smaller but putting, uh, making them bigger and putting um, ramps in them on, 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 off the manufacturing line, which has been the biggest issue we've had in this industry. The cost of insurance and retrofitting a cab to put a ramp into it is about, could be as high as ten to $15,000 per cab which makes it something that the cab drivers and owners don't want to do. Number two, they have to go out of their way and lose money most of the time because they're independent contractors picking up people who are out of the way who, ha who have uh, disabilities. There's gonna have to be, whether it's a paratransit vehicle or any type of, of uh, level four or five uh, taxi, there's gonna need to be somebody there to help you into the car. Now maybe you know, insurance will pay for someone to help people in who, who, who's a personal assistant or, or something. But really, I don't think this is gonna change much. I don't really know if accessibility is gonna benefit. And you know, last but not least, before we go into the big picture, the environmental issues. I think you know, things may get better, depending on whether you're mixing levels, level three with level, level one on the road. But when you get to level four and five, there's no question, especially if you use electric vehicles where it seems that's the direction we're going and you're sharing, um, you know, this is, as Bruce mentioned, this is something that um, is inevitable, <laughs> that level four and five will make a difference. Now, I'll leave you with some of this because I, I think I'm supposed to talk more tomorrow, so I'm, it's getting late. But I, I, wanted, I wanted to talk about what we've learned from the TNC disruption movement, because that's the, the essence of this, this uh, what I was asked to talk about. And there was a perfect storm in San Francisco where there's poor cab service, not enough cabs, and a movement that the Silicon Valley people understood, but nobody else did. And that was that you have millennial marketing, you have a lot of people making a lot of money who can afford to go places and they couldn't get a cab, and you had this little device which they loved and they all play with, and the whole thing kind of made sense. And you had um, a regulatory fragmentation with 10,000 different agencies, PUCs, TLCs, police departments, and they figured out loopholes in how to operate. And, but this was a movement that was more marketing than anything else. Not, it wasn't just about technology, and it was ingenious. Um, and that's kind of what led to what we had there. Now, the, now there's another perfect storm that's 
that's brewing. Here we go. Uh, did, I, did I step on something? Okay. The curtain's going up and then it's going down. At least we don't have the hook yet. It's uh, coming. It's coming. All right. So let me finish. Let me finish up. Um, congestion has. This is why the stage I think is set for uh, uh, automated vehicles. You know, people saying, "Oh, well, look. You, when, when you work in government for 20 plus years." You got more than one agency involved, usually stuff doesn't get done. If you look at the number of state and federal agencies involved in this with no true leader or, or governing authority in terms of a legal source and somebody in charge, it's going to be the biggest impediment to this movement. It's not the technology and that it makes sense. It's going to be government working as fast as the private sector is and working together. So, but the, 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 the conditions are there. You know, as Bruce mentioned, you know, and, and there's a lot of studies out there, congestion is up. There's less vehicles coming into, according to NIMTIC, into the Central Business District of Manhattan, but it took me four hours to get from Brooklyn to City College the other day. It's easier to get to Princeton than to get to, to um, you know, to, 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 to work in Manhattan. Number two, urban populations are growing, more people are moving to cities, people are living longer, traffic fatalities, um, you know, are, are, are here, and we're not towards Vision Zero. There's the lack of multimodal integration, and you have Generation Zers on the way who are even more tech savvy than millennials. Now, there's a famous movie, Follow the Money. Does anybody know what that movie is? All the President's Men. Usually people blurt out deep throat, and I'm like, uh. uh follow the Money. Every app partner has an automotive uh, an, uh, a manufacturing partner at the dance. And just follow the money. This is from Bloomberg, by the way. These are the relations between the tech companies, the <laughs> automakers, and the app companies. The whole world is, is coalescing, they're hedging their bets. They're all in bed with one another. And why? Because we're not going to have, when we get to level four and five, we are not, in my opinion, going to have taxis, Ubers, car to go. We're not going to have Avis and Hertz and Enterprise because when you take the driver out of the vehicle and when Ford and GM and all these companies realize that you can make more money by just renting your car out instead of selling it, big tech like Google and the automakers are going to be the ones that create mobility companies, which is already happening, and they're going to either be selling their cars to cities, uh, they're going to be uh, doing things that we probably can't even think of right now, but it's going to be different. What we, so there may not be a taxi or a TNC system. And tomorrow we'll talk about this, but you know, really drilling down tomorrow, hopefully we'll, we'll talk more about how government and industry can implement this stuff. So um, thank you. I have uh, an interesting article called Look Ma, No Hands, uh, which was just published in the Transportation Lawyers Association Journal. If you want it, want it, I'll, it kind of talks about my theories that I just discussed, and thank you very much. We are an hour late now. Um, so we do have tomorrow workshops, and one of the workshops is exactly on this topic. And I hope that those of you that are interested in this topic will then participate in it, because there is a lot of meat here in terms of this gives us a visibility into what we might end up with or have to deal with with respect to driverless or autonomous taxis. If we go the bad route, they'll never happen. Or they'll create such a problem that there'll be enough monkey wrenches thrown into this thing that it won't get off the ground. Uh, so we really have to get to the point at which we avoid those. And of course, I think it's through ride sharing. It's ride sharing, it's ride sharing, it's ride sharing.